How can data archives stay connected with their users and how can they keep up with users' changing needs? My name is Dr. Jonas Recker and I'm a digital preservation specialist at the GESIS Data Archive for the Social Sciences. In this video, I'm going to answer those questions. In the previous video, I talked about what data archives are and what they do to keep data usable for the long term. In this video, I will speak about for whom we preserve the data. I will introduce the concept of designated community from the OAIS reference model. This video will help you to understand what an archive's designated community is and what its role is in the process of curating and preserving data for the future. In addition, you will learn about an archive's responsibility to monitor its designated community and means of doing so. So why do we preserve data? Digital preservation is not an end unto itself. As social science data archives, we preserve data so that it can be used in the future. For example, by the original creators of the data or by other researchers who want to replicate results or build onto existing research. The reference model for an open archival information system that I introduced in the previous video has coined a specific term in this context the designated community. The designated community is defined as an identified group of potential consumers who should be able to understand a particular set of information. The designated community may be composed of multiple user communities. A designated community is defined by the archive and this definition may change over time. So let's unpack that definition. An identified group of potential consumers. This could be anyone who wants to use the data in the archive. In the case of SESTA archives, for example, the designated community includes researchers who work with quantitative social science research data. An identified group of consumers who should be able to understand a particular set of information. In the case of the SESTA archives, this information is the data sets preserved by the archive. The designated community may be composed of multiple user communities. Although each archive has only one designated community in the OA sense, this designated community could be composed of several distinct sub-communities. For a social science data archive, social sciences researchers may constitute one relevant user community. Data journalists or policymakers may be other ones. A designated community is defined by the archive and this definition may change over time. This is a crucial part of the definition. Usually it is the archive which decides which user groups are part of the designated community. This decision may be influenced by funders, parent organizations, statutes or legal regulations, available resources and staff expertise. As all of these factors can change, the archive may decide to change its definition of the designated community, for example, by including or excluding user groups. For an example, check out the webpage of the Slovenian Social Science Data Archives to see how they define their designated community. The usability of digital data is put at risk by technological change. For example, if the software that we need to render the data becomes unavailable, the file formats can no longer be read. In consequence, researchers can no longer use the data. We call this file format obsolescence. This is an example of what can happen if we open an obsolete file format in a contemporary software. Changes in research culture are a second kind of threat to the usability of the data. The evolution of research methods and changes in central concepts can mean that data becomes more difficult or even impossible to understand for future researchers. This too can make the data unusable. Archives mitigate these risks by monitoring and responding to changes in technology and in research culture, for example, by converting files to new file formats or by enhancing documentation and metadata. But unfortunately, there is a catch. Like any other organization, 
Data archives do not have unlimited financial or human resources. They have to focus their activities and decide, for example, which parts of the environment to monitor and how extensively to do so. They have to evaluate which changes are critical and require action. So how do archives decide what to focus on? For most archives, the key to this is answering the question, who should be able to use our data now and in the future, and for which purposes should it be usable? This is where the designated community and its knowledge base comes in. Each user community that is part of an archive's designated community has a knowledge base. The OAS reference model defines knowledge base as a set of information incorporated by a person or system that allows that person or system to understand received information. A user group's knowledge base consists of skill sets and factual knowledge. It could, for example, include the capability to understand a language like English or a programming language such as Python. Included skills might be the ability of using a web browser or a software such as SPSS. From the perspective of the archive, the knowledge base is the baseline needed to determine which support and which additional information has to be provided for the designated community to be able to use and understand the data. For example, the GESIS data archives assumes that its users understand either English or German and that they are familiar with software such as Stata, SPSS or Excel. Users are also expected to be familiar with standard terminology and concepts as well as research methods and quantitative social science research. Knowing and monitoring the designated community and its knowledge base helps the archive to decide what needs to be done to keep the data usable and understandable for this group. Only if we know, for example, how the designated community uses data, can we plan adequate preservation measures to meet the community's needs. For example, converting a Word file to PDFA format may be adequate if all the designated community needs to do is read or print the file. But converting statistical data captured in an Excel sheet to PDF means making it utterly unusable for social science research because the data is no longer machine readable. Changes in the practices and knowledge base of the designated community can impact an archive. For example, social science researchers increasingly use data in new formats such as JSON files capturing social media data or GIS data for geographic information. The more researchers work with this data, the more commonly it will be submitted to social science data archives for preservation. This means that to accommodate the needs of the designated community, an archive may have to update its collection policy to include the new file formats. It also has to ensure that staff acquire the skills necessary to deal with the new formats. Changes in the practices and the knowledge base of the designated community mean that archives face a dilemma. They have to decide if they want to spend resources and accommodate these changes, or if they just want to carry on like they did before. Here's another example. As interdisciplinary research increases, more and more researchers want to use data generated outside their original discipline. For example, social science data may be used in life sciences or geosciences research. Researchers from these disciplines may come to the data archive with different knowledge and skill sets. The knowledge base is different from that of the archive's designated community. In light of this, the archive has to decide if it wants to update its definition of the designated community and of the baseline knowledge needed to use the data. Such decisions determine future preservation actions and the resources needed to curate the data. So how can archives make sure that they stay connected to their designated community and are aware of important changes? Here are some ideas. User surveys and help desks are a good way of monitoring the designated community. Archives might also have advisory boards and they can encourage staff to be active as researchers in the relevant communities. Workshops and events at conferences are another way of staying in touch with the designated community. In our experience, what archives should aim for is a good mix of more structured forms of monitoring such as events board meetings, surveys, and on the other hand, a way of simply being out there mixing with your designated community. 
In this video, you learned what a designated community is and how its knowledge base impacts preservation and curation decisions at data archives. To learn more about social science data archives, visit cesta.eu. This video is produced by the Consortium of European Social Science Data Archives. For more information on CESTA, please visit www.cesta.eu.